Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us now call to mind our sins and ask the God for pardon and strength. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to cause sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Steer up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, the striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to com fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and a heavy chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, which is the devil or Satan, and tied it up for a thousand years and threw it into the abyss, which he locked over it and sealed so that it could no longer lead the nations astray until the thousand years are completed after this it is to be released for a short time then i saw thrones those who sat on them were entrusted with judgment I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast or its image, nor had accepted its mark on their foreheads or hands. They came to life, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Next I saw a large white throne and the one who was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, the great and the lowly, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the Book of Life. The dead were judged according to their deeds by what was written in the scrolls. The sea gave up its dead. Then death and Hades gave up their dead. All the dead were judged according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the pool of fire. The pool of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the pool of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The word of the Lord. 
Here, God lives among his people. Here, God lives among his people. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Here, God lives among his people. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Here, God lives among his people. Bless they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Bless the man whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. Here God is among his people. Please rise. Raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, Know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us meditate on the first reading, which, is, which was taken from the book of Revelation. I would like to focus on the last paragraph, or the last few verses, which says, Then I saw a new heaven, and the new earth, the former heaven and the former earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. I, I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband you see a new heaven and a new earth this is a a longing a hope something that we are looking forward because we know that the world that we are in is destroyed by sin and by the greed of man This world is not beyond redeem beyond and re, beyond being unredeemable, which means that this world is still redeemable. This world is still savable. 
it can be it can still be saved the original story in creation of creation tells us that god wanted to establish paradise on earth and we know that our first parents destroyed that hope because of their disobedience as our Christian theology tells us. And because of that disobedience, sin entered. But that disobedience is rooted in man's desire to be master to be the one who will determine what is good and what is evil it is the rooted on man's in the case of adam and eve and their own desires to be gods because the snake said no you will not die if you eat the bread, uh, if you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will not die. You will become like gods. In other words, you will become masters. You have no masters anymore. You will be the master. You will be equal to the one who gives commands or commandments. You are no longer going to be subject of orders. But you yourselves will be the one who will give the order. Because that is what God is. He gives the commandments. He gives commands. He gives orders. He tells, do not eat of this. You may eat of the rest. Ordering, commanding. Not able to command. So, when Adam and Eve decided to eat of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they took upon themselves that desire to be masters to be the lord of their own designs and plans and because of that paradise was lost and I think that is true also in our own lives. Our Christian theology tells us that humans were made after the image and likeness of God, which means our identity finds its meaning in relation to God. The human person will lose his or her real identity if it is not connected to God. Because after all, we are just image and likeness of God. Quotation marks. In other words, we are reflections. We are copies of that image and likeness of the Lord. But we are not God's. So, in practical terms, we become fully human if we remain true to be in image and likeness of the Lord. And how do we do that? We do that by obedience to the commandments that the Lord gives us. A person who follows God's commandments is truly a human person. Truly free. Ang problema sa sinin ang kalibutan, sa subong, nagahambal, nga, ang mga lahi is being seen as shackles. Parang it's like posas or, or chains. Ang mga ilang pagtanaw, no? Especially mga liberal, secularist. They would look at the commandments from the Bible as hindrances, as shackles, as chains that put down the freedom of man. Pero para sa ato nila, lain sala. Sala ng ilay yan. Nga ako. Because the human person will always look for 
a master. Tandaan nyo gitna, at tandaan gitna itong tanan. The human person will always look for a master because that is our programming. Kung sa computer pa. We are programmed to look for a master. That is our innate nature. So if we reject God as our master, you will look for other masters and I'm very sure of that. Maybe even yourselves, you consider yourself as your own master, but still, who are you? You are but not, you are nothing but a slave to your instincts. We will just be all subjects of our own instincts, slaves to our instinctual desires. If we will reject God as master, another master will come into the picture. But this master is harsh. This master is terrible. And this master will be our instinctual drives and desires. There are so many of those. Okay, let's go back. I am just a, just a long excursus. Let's go back to the new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Notice here. I would like to adapt the idealistic hermene the hermeneutics of idealism. You will see here that the new earth and the new heaven will be brought down from God. While this world is not yet beyond repair, this planet is not yet beyond repair, this is not what God wants us to be the new heaven and the new earth. Our direction will be missing or rather wrong if you will be thinking that this earth will be the new paradise. No. It's very clear in the book of Revelation. Something new will be given by the Lord that will replace this old creation. Tiko maminsar kita na hindi nga kalibutan Amo na ini siya. Ah, ti sala kita. Nga sala kita. Because this world is not the world that God wants us to have. Even if we are going to restore all things back to its original primeval conditions, this will not still be a very good planet to live in. You get the point? Oh, for example, gimbalik ta ng tanan-tanan ng mga puno ang ipakutod ta. Gin panggigubatan ng mga struktura nga nagaupang sa mga katubigan nga nagakausa sa baha. Do you think that is a paradise? That is something that is wrong with our present way of thinking. Akala natin, if we will do tree planting, if we will uh, do mangrove planting, if we will do uh, no more carbon uh, footprints, that the world will become paradise. No! It's never been the intention of the Lord to live in a primeval forest. Do you think it was God's idea that we will live in the dinosaurs? <laughs> of course, the dinosaurs cannot be revived. No, that has never been the idea of God. God did not meant us to live in a forest, even if how beautiful the forest is, because there will still be evil there. Take note that the Garden of Eden, evil is there. Or rather, evil was there. Hindi niya mga kung ano ano da. Of course, we take care of creation because if we destroy creation, we are destroyed also, and that's what happening with the baha and all those things. Di ba Or of course, we take care of nature to avoid catastrophe and natural disasters. But the absence of natural disasters and catastrophes is not paradise. And that is something that we miss in our in our in our preaching about creation. 
We always miss that point. That's why I am appalled when there are so many seminars in online or whatever about creation. There is something missing in their talks. And what is that me? What is the missing link there? God. Walang place si God. And even if God is mentioned, it was side lang. Hindi niya center. As if, if we were all plant trees in this world and restore it back to being forest, just like what the dinosaurs in the early Tiananmen Dertals are living in, it will be paradise. No, it's not. It's missing the important and most essential point. God is what made paradise. Uh, God is the essential. Sorry. God is what makes paradise. The presence of God is essential and therefore it should be centered and center of all discussions with regards to all this reforestation and so on, whatever. Okay, what I'm saying is I'm not against uh, taking care of nature. Huh? No. Dapat nga rin nato natapon ng natura. Kaya nga, ah, kung gubaon ta, balikan niya kita. That is how I- cruel the world is. Take note of that. The world is cruel. This planet is a cruel planet. Destroy it and it will destroy you. That's how plain and simple it is. This so-called Mother Earth is a cruel mother. This world whom you call Mother Earth is not a loving mother. Because a loving mother will forgive the hurts that you give to her. But this planet, no. This is a cruel world. Destroy one part of it, it will revenge, it will take revenge. And so therefore, why do we call this mother, Mother Earth? For we have to use that word Mother Earth because this is a very cruel mother. This Mother Earth, quotation mark, is cruel. Destroy a part of it and she will return with vengeance. Is that Mother? No. To end this, to end this reflection, what is the new heaven and new earth now? Well, this is something that we have missed also most often in our theologizing. It is God who will establish the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. It will be coming from Him, not from us. We are not going to be the one who will make sure, make the kingdom of God happen. No. It is still God's initiative. He will be the one to bring it down from His place. So he will be the one to give it. The newness of heaven and, and earth is not because we made it. No. It is, be, it is new because God will make it anew. It is God. So anong ato niyang akwa niya? Anong ato niyang uh, role? Our role is plain and simple. Prepare for the kingdom of God. Which means we open ourselves to that event that will happen in God's own volition and in God's own time. Hindi nga we become builders? Yes, we become builders. How do we become builders of God's kingdom? By participating. Hindi nga ikaw yan naging mo. Yan, Diyos na yan. Sa iyo ron, paano kita nagabulig na magpasanyog ang kinarian sa Diyos o mapatigayo ang kinarian sa Diyos by preparing for it? And how do we prepare? Well, the rest is already told to you by repentance, by being good, by doing justice, and so many others, by practicing a virtuous life, living in a righteous manner, and so on and so forth. Those are preparations for the kingdom. And in a way, participating in the reality that is yet to come. But at the end of the day, it is God 
The kingdom of God is God's own initiative. So my dear friends, kadang mo sa nahambal ko, ang bot ko ano nakuha niyo leksyon. Kapag parang may napulutan ka mo. Pero first and foremost, I think this, uh, this, this thought na, no? I will leave you with this thought. We participate in the coming of, the, of God's kingdom. Part of that is taking care of creation. Because creation, as I said, is part of us. We are part of creation. We destroy a part of creation, we destroy ourselves. But this is not the end of it all. Whenever we take care of creation, whenever we take care of the forest or the rivers or the, the, the air, the quality of air, let us not be fixed only on those things. Rather, let us go beyond and always see these things in the light of God. Always dovetailing all our efforts to God. Because the danger is we might be trapped in the mentality that we are the one who builds God's kingdom. Yes, we build God's quotation mark. We build God's kingdom. How? By participating in His design. Not making ourselves as the primary actor. It is always God and should, and should be the center of all these things. God. Amen. Let us now pray and offer our petitions to the Lord. As we say, Lord of history, sustain us. That the church may respond to the call for conversion and renewal. Let us pray to the Lord. That people of goodwill may work together to put an end to war and hatred, oppression and injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. For our history, that we may increase our awareness of the presence of Christ among the poor and the suffering people. Let us pray to the Lord. For our history, that the sick may be given strength and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For our history, that our friends and relatives who have died may experience everlasting joy in the company of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of history, sustain us. Almighty God, listen to our prayers. Open our eyes to your presence all around us. Make us closer to you each day. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you form it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gives you pray, by sending down your spirit upon them. Let it do fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body. We shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Patricia our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Sebastian, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, and Pedro Calungsol, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to our Heavenly Father in the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the death of our life. But only the word, and my soul shall be. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel for the Oratio Imperata. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. And of those government and private agencies, 
that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rob, pray, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Palungsol, pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.